No matter how hard we try, we don't seem to be able to get away from Vega conversation. Uh, whether it be the pricing scandal that everyone's calling it, whether or not there's back-end deals and it really costs more than the MSRP, uh, the fact that it's being marked up everywhere because of supply and demand, and everyone's been waiting for the custom cards to come out because even though they've updated the cooler and it looks cool, this is the special edition one, it is still a reference style cooler, which means they get pretty damn hot, about 85C. But we've actually got the world's first custom PCB card right here, the Asus Vega, I almost did it again, RX Vega 64. I'm always gonna call it Vega RX 64, I don't know why. But we're gonna talk about this card, we're gonna put it through the paces, we're gonna see exactly what the difference is between that guy, that, that guy, and this guy, whatever. Simplify your multi-system configurations quickly and easily with Synergy, the desktop device sharing software. Share your mouse and keyboard seamlessly in real time on Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems, allowing you to reduce desktop clutter while giving you back valuable desktop space. Get 50% off Synergy by using the link found in the description below. Now before we actually unbox this, I've got a special edition unboxing for you guys. Are you ready? My unboxing skills suck and I'm really hoping I don't break this. Barely even fits on the table, you know that? I should... <laughs> don't make that face. Nick is already anticipating like bad things to happen. Oh yeah. What could it be? It's the newest GPU on the market. The BFG64. We've been waiting for this. Why do you look, you look disappointed that nothing's broken yet. I think there's been some budget cuts at YouTube because last time I got this, it was printed on like parchment paper. Now it's just like regular old printer paper. You're bigger than Vancouver. Is that a fat joke? You're bigger than Venice. You're even bigger than Las Vegas. One million subscribers. Maybe you've imagined that day for a long time or maybe you'd never thought you'd grow so big. I get it. I, the love handles thing, right? Anyway, it looks silver, but it's, it's gold. It's gold, look at that. Look. At if I find that on glare. There we go. Look at that. Dude. Congratulations for surpassing one million subscribers. All right, can you take this please before I break it for reals? <laughs> so bonus unboxing over. Let's take a look at the Strix card. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, TLDR, too long didn't read. They basically say this card is only about 2% to 7% faster than the reference card for a couple of reasons. One, the uh, the AMD's version of GPU boost, right? If it's got temperature overhead, if it's got power delivery overhead, then it's gonna self overclock itself a little bit farther. But when it comes to uh, the actual performance, right, you gain some performance over time because it didn't therm thermal throttle when it hits the temperature max like you get on the reference cards, but it uh, also just comes down 100% to the silicon lottery. So the point of today's video is going to be how much of that lottery did we win today? Now, I mean, there's always the, the idea of, do we get pre-binned cards, right, as reviewers? Do we get the best of the best? Uh, I, I honestly don't know the answer to that. I hope they're sending us something, they pull off a pallet that's going to retail, and we are just playing the lottery game like everyone else. But here it is, you guys can see, it is indeed a custom card. You can see that the PCB is much bigger, right, if we compare it to the reference card, look at that, it's a much bigger PCB, which is kind of funny because if you look at the size of the card, and this right here is actually the core. This is the core, the HBM module. It's got all the memory on there. So you can kind of see the size of it. So just like the reference card, it's got two eight pin power connectors on there. But of course it's got a few extra features, right? It's got its RGB connect on there so it can use Asus Aura to, you can plug uh, RGB LED strips into this and control it off the, the graphics card and the built-in software. You also have fan headers on the back so that you can actually speed up system fans with the graphics card load. The problem is fans are, awfully, are often running off of PWM, which has to do with CPU load. And when the GPU gets hot, and you guys know in games, the CPUs don't get nearly as hot as the GPU. They don't load up as much. The fans may not ramp up enough, which means as this is blowing heat into your case, you need the case to actually expel the heat. So as the graphics card speeds up, what you're gonna notice is that your fans in your case could speed up as well if you plug them into that. But then of course you have more cables coming off the back. Now, this is th that's the thing when it comes to overclocking though, is more power does not always mean better performance. Things like Pascal, sometimes you can get higher clocks at stock voltage or even under volting slightly versus giving it more power. So it comes down to all kinds of things, all kinds of factors. And uh, who knows what we're gonna get today? So rather than sit here and talk about it, 
I'm gonna go ahead and install it, and then we'll see exactly what we got out of it. Transition. All right, I've spent about the last three days tweaking and overclocking this car, talking to Asus on the phone, text message and stuff, because I don't feel like we're getting as much overclocking performance out of this as we would have hoped for a custom PCB. Now, let me explain. The limited edition card right here overclocked pretty decently. In fact, I did a video about that that you guys can go and check out. But remember, these are the exact same cores inside. And the only thing that uh, the custom manufacturers really have a chance to play with here is gonna be things like power delivery, cooling, and uh, of course, acoustics based on their cooling designs. They're not changing anything to do with the core, the memory, or any of that stuff. That is still being supplied by AMD. So we're definitely gonna be dealing with silicon lottery here. And unfortunately, it seems like the card I have is kind of a loser. And that's why you're not seeing any slides here comparing it to the limited edition card because this card was indeed boosting or turbo clocking up higher based on conditions than even my Strix card is. And that's why I'm saying I think we have a silicon lottery loser here. Now let's go ahead and kind of demonstrate that. I am using the driver 17.8.2 because um, Asus confirmed with me after some of the findings that I had and they verified on their end that there is indeed some sort of weird bug happening with 17.9.2 where the card is not overclocking or pushing itself nearly as far as it should. But with that said, let's go and take a look here. So if we go to the OC button right there, it basically allows you, or allows itself to just push everything kind of farther, right? So it's got this little triangle here that shows the different modes. Obviously this is giving a bias towards performance where coolness and silence isn't as important. Give us all the performance. So we're gonna go ahead and just load up here, heaven benchmark um, with everything sort of maxed out on that. We're going with 1440p settings. We're going with uh, anti-aliasing at 8x. So we really just wanna push the card as hard as we possibly can. That's gonna, with the anti-aliasing at 8x too, it means we're also gonna be testing out that memory cache. I mean, the massive amounts of memory in terms of memory speed, at least on this card. And we're just gonna let this go here for a few seconds because I wanna see what it's gonna sort of boost up to. In fact, I already know because I've already done this test for the last three days, but yeah. So what's gonna happen here is it's gonna go up to its max frequency and then based on temperatures, just like GPU Boost 3.0, I guess, based on temperatures, tem uh, power target, power limit, how much we have left over, it's gonna start to kind of find its equilibrium and then that's where it's just gonna hover. Let's look at how far it went here. It looks like we went up to approximately 1,553 megahertz, but then we sort of dropped down to 1,540, 1,526, 1,525, 1,527, 1,514, 1,510, Right, so you can see it was just kind of doing this over time. And what I experienced over the last couple of days over extended periods of testing was that the card was dropping all the way down into the mid 1400s, which meant that that's why this card was actually beating the Strix and all the game testing I was doing because this card, although still a reference style fan, for whatever reason, even at 84C, was still staying at a higher frequency than the Strix card is. The Strix card just falls, it just falls fast. And I don't know what the problem is there. Now, if I go ahead and just come into the professional mode right here, we can start playing with things. And you can see the frequencies that you were just seeing was while it was attempting to hit 1630 megahertz because that's the target. That's the, where we wanna see the card go and it wasn't getting anywhere close to that. When was it, 1554 was the highest, or 1553 was the highest we got? So that is extremely unfortunate. What I also find kind of interesting is they show a, a voltage slider here, which probably works when it comes to undervolting, right? Can we undervolt this and have it apply? Let's see, apply. Yes, we can undervolt and have it apply. We can't overvolt, right? We try and go above 1200, it won't allow us. So what I'm gonna try right now is I'm gonna go ahead and just try bringing this back down to the stock voltage of 1100 because what we've seen in the past and, and other channels have shown is that undervolting this card can sometimes lead to not only comparable you know, frequency settings, but much lower power draw. So I'm just gonna test that and leave it at 1630. But also too, when you go into professional mode and you take it out of OC mode, the power target goes back to 100%. And we wanna push the power target as far as possible because custom card, custom cooling, we might as well take advantage of that. So we're we going to go ahead and bump our power target all the way back up to 150%. We're gonna apply that. So now what we've done was we've told it to uh, undervolt and give us more power limit, which is interesting. But let's just see what happens here. So the first thing I'm noticing here with the lesser voltage is we are not crashing, obviously, and we are experiencing less acoustics because of the fact, or lower acoustics, because the fans are not 
really even ramping up. In fact, the first test I did, it only took about 15 seconds before the fans started to speed up. But what we're experiencing here is that the fans just really are, are running nice and slow. So what we experienced now was we went up to 1583. Look at that, we went up 30 megahertz by undervolting the card and allowing more power limit. So what if I put it back to 1200? Okay, so we're back up to 1200. We're still at the 1630 target and we've got 150% power limit still applied to the card. Let's see if we get the same 1583 or if it goes back to 1553. That will start to tell us if we are power limited on this card, which I'm assuming we are. That's an assumption anyway. And then what we'll be able to start testing is how much frequency we can give it. So we went to ah, 1556. So as you guys can see, we are definitely having power limit problems with Vega. Adding more voltage to the card obviously doesn't do anything. And, and, and other channels have already explored that and shows that to be true. Let's see what happens if we start trying to tell the card to go to like 1700. What happens then? And we got a crash. Like immediately we crashed. And this is what I've been experiencing was anytime I try to apply any more like frequency to it, above and beyond like where it's going on its own, I'm dealing with these crashes here. So now what I'm gonna test is putting the voltage back up to the plus 1200. Let's try, let's try 1150 actually. Let's see if giving it just a little bit more voltage will yield different results. Nope, exact same results. All right, so I went to 1660 on the core and I'm going back up to 1200 on the voltage. But I, guys, I've spent, like I said, the last several days playing around with this. I already know what the result is going to be. Um, yeah, so memory overclocking though, let's go like plus 150 on that. And in fact, I'm a, I'll just put that back down to 1630. Like I said, I already know, I already know that this card is not an overclocker. So we've been running a little bit here. The fans are, are blasting because I told them to. I wanted the fans to blast. So let's see what we got. So again, we went up to 1553. That's as far as we got was 1553. So we're back to 1100 on the voltage and 1640 on the core. And we're, remember, we're still plus 150 on the memory. But again, this is, this is such superficial, minimal changes that we're seeing over, like I said, we could get with the limited edition card, this still overclocked farther. This guy was able to achieve like about 1700 before it started crashing. And that's what Asus was telling me their card was able to achieve when we were on the phone and talking and testing, which leads me to believe that this is just simply a, a silicon lottery loss. Now kudos to Asus for sending me a, re a retail sample because my goal here is to give you guys a retail experience. We went up to 1595. Again, so out of the box setting at 1200 voltage almost seems like a bad thing, at least for this card. I mean, could come down to ASIC quality as well. So what if I now try just 1650? Okay, we're at 1650. I just wanna get that 1600 number, but I don't seem to be able to get 1600 out of this. It, it just seems to crash. Well, that's a good sign. We didn't immediately crash. Uh, we still got only 1595 and it dropped back down to like 1560, 1580. Let's try one more tick. So we're trying just one more tick, all right? So 1660 is where it's at. I think it's gonna crash. Well, not immediately, that's a good sign. Okay, so we got 1603 on that one. Sometimes when you do overclocking, you incre in in incrementally increase it slowly you can get better results than just like moving the slider instantly. But this is where we had crashed last time and there it goes. So there you guys have it. Now I've tried all of this that you guys are seeing also with the built-in AMD Radeon software and was getting the exact same results. So unfortunately guys, this is my experience with the Strix card retail experience. It does not perform any better than a limited edition card out of the box. In fact, it performed a little bit lower, but now I know why, right? Because if I move the slider on the voltage down, we got better core speed, which brought it up to at least where this was coming out of the box. So what you were seeing were the exact same results, which is, I mean, if you, acoustics and thermals are what this card is designed for. At least that's what was communicated to me. Don't expect a necessarily better core performance out of it. They're the exact same core is being sent over by AMD. So it's a 100% lottery. It's not like there's a binning process that the manufacturer can do on their own end. So, is what it is, guys. 
there you go. First look here at the AMD Strix RX Vega 64. A little disappointed, but hey, you can't win them all. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, and also, too, if you want merch, remember, links down below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.